we'll just wait for another minute and then we'll start. Thank you for your patience. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Yashi Gandhi, and I work as a researcher at Sangat. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the first public event celebrating Sangat's 25-year tradition of generating a high-quality evidence base in mental health. This webinar is the first of several that we're planning to organize over the course of the next few months, where we will be discussing key questions, developments, and innovations in global mental health. As many of you would know, Sangat is a nonprofit organization headquartered in Goa with hubs in Delhi, Bhopal, and Pune. Our primary focus areas are child development, adolescent and youth health, and mental health research. For the past 25 years, Sangat has been developing ways of making quality mental health care accessible and affordable for the wider community in India. Today, we're joined by three esteemed speakers to have a conversation about how mental health organizations adapted to COVID-19 and its unprecedented nature. Each of them have led their organizations towards adapting to this new reality, as well as modifying existing programs and innovating solutions to meet the mental health needs of the populations they work with. This webinar is also being live streamed on Sangat India's YouTube channel. We will also be live tweeting the event, so please do us by using the hashtag MH and COVID. We will start with a short presentation from every speaker, and I request all the attendees to use the Q&A tab for asking questions to any or all of the panelists. You can also upvote questions, and the other attendees may have asked to show support to that question. Please do not use the chat option for asking questions as they may get lost or missed there. We have a 30 minute Q&A session, so please do keep your questions coming throughout the course of the webinar, and we will get to them after the panelists have made their opening remarks. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Deepa, Pavar from Anugast. I would like to introduce her and then hand over the mic. Deepa is the founder and director of Anubhuti Trust and has worked in the social development sector for over 20 years. She has worked extensively on issues of gender, health, rights, leadership, and community development. She's a core team member of the Right to Pee campaign and an NT DNT activist. She's also carrying out the first ever anti-young woman-led research on sexual and reproductive health of NDDNT women. She works as a trainer and counselor with the most vulnerable communities, as well as with government officials and corporates. She's also a published author and poet. Over to you, Deepa. Thank you. Sabko zindabad aur jai bhim. 
कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन संगत ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स आपने काफी अच्छे से एफर्ट्स लेते हुए पूरे किए हैं मेरे पास दस मिनट का टाइम है और मैं कोशिश करूंगी कि जो भी मुद्दे है मैं यहाँ पे रखू तो सबसे पहले अनुभूति संस्था करके हम जो काम करते हैं वो काफी यूथ लेड है यंग वीमेन लेड है जहाँ पे जैसे आपने कहा कि एस आर एच आर हो जेंडर जस्टिस हो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन और ह्यूमन राइट हो यहाँ पे समझ बनाते हुए ग्राउंड के लोगों के लीडरशिप के साथ जो है हम उनके मुद्दों को लेकर और उनके सवालों को लेकर काम करते हैं लेकिन जिस तरह से पैंडमिक अनाउंस हुआ लॉकडाउन अनाउंस हुआ और उस सिचुएशन के साथ हम गुजरने लगे तब मैं खुद नोमेडिक ट्राइब कम्युनिटी से आती हूँ और नोमेडिक ट्राइब कम्युनिटी के सिचुएशन स्ट्रगल्स मुझे नजदीकी के साथ पता है हमारे काम का एक बहुत ही अहम हिस्सा भी नोमेडिक ट्राइब कम्युनिटी के साथ चलता है तो सबसे पहले समझ के लेना हो, होगा कि कौन है नोमेडिक ट्राइब क्योंकि कई बार हमें वो भी नहीं पता होता है तो आप जो भी लोग सुन रहे उनको पता होगा कि आपके इर्द गिर्द आपके समुदाय में कभी आपने बंदर का खेल दिखाने वाले लोग देखे हैं सांप का खेल दिखाने वाले लोग देखे है आपके घर में पुराने कपड़ों का क्विंट गोदड़ी सीती हुई औरतें देखिए कभी अपने खुद से बनाए हुए इंस्ट्रूमेंट बजाने वाली कुछ कम्युनिटी देखे हैं लोहे के हथियार बनाने वाले कम्युनिटी देखे हैं तो वो लोग जो रोटी रोजी के लिए एक जगह से दूसरी जगह माइग्रेंट होते हैं एक माइग्रेटरी एटीट्यूड में जीते हैं और जिंदगी के बहुत ही कम रिसोर्सेस के साथ बहुत ही कम संसाधनों के साथ जो अपनी जिंदगी व्यतीत करते हैं तो हम अगर पैंडमिक के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में इनके बारे में सोचेंगे तो सबसे पहले एज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हमारे मन में ये ख्याल आया ये चिंता आई कि जहाँ पे पैंडमिक से पूरी दुनिया हार रही है डेवलप्ड कंट्री हार रहे हैं प्रिविलेज लोग उससे डील नहीं कर पा रहे हैं तो ऐसे लोग जो जिनके पास जमीन नहीं है जिनके पास किसी भी तरह के रिसोर्सेस नहीं है जिनके पास जानकारी नहीं है नॉलेज नहीं है और किसी भी तरह का सोशल पॉलिटिकल विल नहीं है जहाँ पे उनके मुद्दों को कोई रिप्रेजेंट करे ऐसे हालातों में वो पैंडमिक से किस तरह से जो है वो डील कर पाएंगे तो शुरुआती दौर से जो है अनुभूति ने एंटी डेंटी रिलीफ कैंपेन की शुरुआत की हमने एस के साथ शेड्यूल ट्राइब हो रूलर हो इनके साथ भी काम किया लेकिन हमारे काम का बहुत ही फोकस्ड एरिया जो रहा पैंडमिक के दौरान रिलीफ वर्क का वो नोमेडिक ट्राइब रिलीफ कैंपेन रहा जहाँ पे सबसे पहले जब हम कहते कि हम इंक्लूसिव है तब हम इंक्लूसिव होने के लिए एफर्ट्स ले, ले सकते हैं मेहनत कर सकते हैं लेकिन हम इंक्लूसिव है कि नहीं ये हमारे साथ का समुदाय तय करता है हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए लोग तय करते हैं जिन लोगों के लिए जिन लोगों के साथ हम काम करते हैं तब हमें लगा कि एज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हमारा काफी आंसरेबल है हम कि हम इंक्लूसिव है क्या इस इमरजेंसी में तो अगर हम है हम जस्टिस को मा, मानते हैं हम लोगों के सही सवालों को मानते हैं तो समाज के ऐसे टपकों के साथ जो कई अंगों से वर्नलेबल है जो जमीन से वर्नलेबल है रिप्रेजेंटेशन से वर्नलेबल है जानकारी से वर्नलेबल है ऐसे समुदाय के साथ बहुत ही एफर्ट्स के साथ काम करने की जरूरत है हमने किया क्या रिलीफ वर्क के अंदर तो डायरेक्ट रिलीफ के अंदर जो है ऑबीवियस है लोग भूखे थे लोगों को फूड की फूड ग्रेन की अनाज की जरूरत थी वो हमने करीबन महाराष्ट्र के पंद्रह डिस्ट्रिक्ट के अंदर नोमेडिक ट्राइब की करीबन बाईस समुदायों तक अलग अलग फिर वो पारदी हो बंजारा हो लमानी हो डावरी गोसावी हो ऐसे अलग अलग समुदाय जो कला के ऊपर एंटरटेनमेंट के ऊपर जो है अपने रोजगार चलाते हैं और जैसे ही पैंडमिक हुआ बाहर आना मना हो गया और ये लोगों के पास राशन स्टॉक करने का भी कल्चर नहीं है ये लोगों के पास सेविंग्स नहीं है बैंक अकाउंट नहीं है डॉक्यूमेंट नहीं है तो इतने इंटरसेक्शनलिटी और मार्जलाइजेशन के अंदर इस तरह के इमरजेंसी को डील करना मुश्किल था हम राशन और ये सपोर्ट तो कर रहे थे मेडिकल हेल्प भी उनको कर रहे थे जहां जहां पे शक्य है बहुत बड़ा माइग्रेशन भी चला था इंटरनल स्टेट आउट ऑफ स्टेट भी जहाँ पे नोमेडिक ट्राइब के बड़ा पॉपुलेशन जो है वो इनसिक्योरिटी के कारण कोई भी संसाधन न होने का कारण पैनिक होके भी एक जगह से दूसरी जगह जो है वो स्थलांतर कर रहा था ऐसे हालतों में उनको मॉरल सपोर्ट देना इमोशनल सपोर्ट देना और रिसोर्स सपोर्ट देने का काम भी अनुभूति ने किया है मेंटल हेल्थ के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में मुझे बहुत ही ज्यादा जरूरी लगा कि ये ऐसे टपके है जो फोन उठा के हेल्पलाइन का यूज नहीं कर सकते हैं ये ऐसे टपके है जहाँ पे मेंटल हेल्थ का एक कॉन्टेक्स्ट पहुंचा ही नहीं है वो लिटरेसी ही नहीं है राइट तो ऐसे हालातों में वो जिस पैनिक कंडीशन से जिस एक तरह के इम्बैलेंस इन डिफरेंट एटीट्यूड से और सिचुएशन से डील कर रहे हैं 
वो इंटरनल कम्युनिटी इंडिविजुअल के लिए बहुत ही एक बर्डन और पैनिक कंडीशन क्रिएट करने वाला सिचुएशन था फॉर एग्जाम्पल रोजगार ठप हो गए है कल क्या खाना है उसकी चिंता है बाहर जाएंगे तो पुलिस की पुलिस की एक तरह की दहशत है क्योंकि ये कम्युनिटी जो है आपको पता है कि नोमेडिक ट्राइब जो है वो क्रिमिनलाइजेशन का एक तरह का स्टिग्मा लेकर जी रहे हैं ये ब्रिटिश रूलिंग से जो है एक स्टिग्माटाइज कर दी गई कम्युनिटीज है तो बाहर पुलिस की एक दहशत है कि हम बाहर कैसे जाए लेकिन जिंदा भी रहना है ऐसे कंडीशन में बहुत ही ज्यादा जो बर्डन है वो नोमेडिक ट्राइब की औरतों के ऊपर भी आया उनके घर को जिंदा रखने का ऐसे हालातों में हमने दो तीन इंपॉर्टेंट काम किए हैं सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट काम जो है जहां भी शक्य है ऑनलाइन काउंसलिंग की है जो भी यूथ इस कम्युनिटी से आते हैं कम्युनिटी लीडर्स आते हैं विमेन लीडर आते हैं जो समझ सकते हैं हमारी भाषा को और उनकी भाषा में वो डिलीवर कर सकते हैं ऐसी जगह पे हमने ऑनलाइन काउंसलिंग की है हमने कैपेसिटी बिल्ड की है करीबन हमने थाने डिस्ट्रिक्ट के अंदर नोमेडिक ट्राइब के दो कम्युनिटी लीडर्स को ट्रेन किया है कि हाउ टू रिस्पॉन्ड डिजास्टर इन द कॉन्टेस्ट ऑफ जेंडर मेंटल हेल्थ चाइल्ड राइट और ये सारे इंटरसेक्शनलिटी के अंदर आप इस तरह के इमरजेंसी कंडीशन को किस तरह से डील करोगे किस तरह से रिस्पॉन्ड करोगे इसके लिए हमने कैपेसिटी बिल्ड की है कम्युनिटी लीडर्स की कई सारी अनगिनत कॉर्नर मीटिंग ली है जो भी लोग हमारे पास है पैंडेमिक में बहुत ज्यादा जो है वॉलेंटियर अवेलेबिलिटी भी नहीं थी क्योंकि ये डिजीज इस तरह से है ये रोग इस तरह से है कि आपको ग्राउंड में लोग भी नहीं मिल रहे हैं तब बहुत ज्यादा कैपेसिटी बिल्ड करते हुए लोगों को तैयार किया गया कि लोग लोगों को मेंटल हेल्थ सपोर्ट दे मेंटल हेल्थ कम से कम मेंटरिंग करे हमारे ट्रेनिंग के साथ वो हमने काम किया है और वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट की ग्रास रूट का जो मेंटल हेल्थ है वो बस मेंटल हेल्थ के कॉन्टेक्ट तक लिमिट लिमिटेड नहीं है उनका डायरेक्ट कनेक्शन जो है वो रिसोर्सेस के साथ है जैसे अगर मैं भूखी मर रही हूँ या मेरे घर में अनाज नहीं है मेरे घर में कोई बीमार है सारे हॉस्पिटल कोविड नाइन्टीन डिक्लेयर हो चुके हैं ऐसे हालातों में जब घर में पैसा नहीं है बाहर जाना मना है संसाधन नहीं है तो एक एक तरह का स्ट्रेसफुल कंडीशन से नोमेडिक ट्राइब के लोग गुजर रहे थे बहुत ही पैनिक कंडीशन था ऐसे हालातों में क्या किया जाए तो हमने कुछ लोग आइडेंटिफाई किए और इस तरह के ग्रुप आइडेंटिफाई किए जहां तक हम पहुंचे हैं तो हमने नोमेडिक ट्राइब के अंदर भी जैसे इंटरसेक्शनलिटी के अंदर भी हमने मार्जिनलाइजेशन को फोकस्ड किया जैसे विमेन एट रिस्क है प्रेग्नेंट विमेन हो न्यू मदर्स हो विमेन विद डिजीज हो डिसबिलिटीज हो मेंटल हेल्थ डिसबिलिटीज हो इस तरह के अलग अलग आइडेंटिफिकेशन के साथ साथ हमने रिलीफ वर्क पहुंचाने की कोशिश की है रिसोर्सेज संस्था से जो हुए वो तो कोशिश की है लेकिन बाकी संगठनों के साथ भी टाइप करते हुए हमने एडवोकेसी के लिए काफी कोशिश की है क्योंकि यहाँ पे सर्विस देना ये एक ही मकसद नहीं है इमरजेंसी के अंदर मार्जिनलाइज्ड पीपल की कम्युनिटी के राइट सबसे पहले हनन होते हैं वो निगलेटेड होते हैं उनके पास किसी का भी ध्यान नहीं होता है तो ऐसी आवाजें डिसीजन मेकर तक पहुंचाना और इमिडिएट हम जैसे इंटेलेक्चुअल क्या सोच रहे हैं नोमेडिक ट्राइब के लिए जैसे नोमेडिक ट्राइब बहुत ही खुले एक स्कैटर्ड जिसे हम कहे समुदाय की तरह रहते हैं वो आउटकट्स में रहते हैं लॉकडाउन का लॉक करने के लिए उनके पास चार दीवारें भी नहीं है ऐसे हालात में वो किस तरह से सरकारी रूल और ये सारी चीजें फॉलो करे तो हमने कलेक्टर्स के साथ अलाइनमेंट में मिलकर कोलेब्रेशन में मिलकर ऐसे इंस्ट्रक्शंस और सूचनाएं उन तक पहुंचाने के काम किए हैं कि आपके कम्युनिटी सेंटर सार्वजनिक मंदिर जो है वो नोमेडिक ट्राइब के लिए अवेलेबल हो एट्रोसिटी जैसी घटनाएं है जो मॉब लिंचिंग जैसी घटनाएं है उसके ऊपर सरकार खास ध्यान दे और सेंसिटिव होके सुरक्षा प्रदान करे बच्चों के बारे में वो कुछ आगे आकर करे खैर जो आ, हमने कोशिश तो की कि होगा लेकिन सारी चीजें ऑबीवियस नहीं हो पाई तो हमने साइबर टेनिस जो है एडवोकेसी का काम किया है और ये सारी चीजें मैं मेंटल हेल्थ के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में देखती हूँ क्योंकि मेंटल हेल्थ ये आइसोलेटेड नहीं है ये एक जस्टिस का मुद्दा है ये एक न्याय का मुद्दा है इसीलिए एज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हम मेंटल हेल्थ को मेंटल जस्टिस करके प्रोनाउंस करते हैं क्वन करते हैं जहाँ पे कुछ लोग बहुसंख्य लोग ऐसे कम्युनिटी से आते हैं जहाँ पे उनके पास कोई भी ब्रिज नहीं है ऐसे कोई भी ब्रिज नहीं है कि जो इमरजेंसी से डील कर पाए ऐसे हालातों में एज स्टेक होल्डर हम एनजीओ करके भी हमारी रिस्पांसिबिलिटी हमें लगती है कि बहुत बड़ी है काफी स्ट्रगल भी हमने महसूस की है क्योंकि हम काफी ग्रास रूट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है अनुभूति काफी अपब्रिंगिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है ऐसे हालातों में फाइनेंशियली मतलब फंडिंग के दृष्टिकोण से हो वॉलेंटियर के दृष्टिकोण से हो और इवन पुलिस परमिशन और ये सारे दृष्टिकोण से हम कई मायनों में वर्नलेबल भी थे लेकिन हमने कोशिश की कि 
अभी जो ये वक्त है ये हमारे हर्डर और एब्स्टेकल्स पे ऊपर बात करने का नहीं है बल्कि हमें परफॉर्म करने का है एक्शन करने का है और वो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी जो है वो हमने वहां पे अदा करने की कोशिश की उसके साइबर टेनिस ने जो है अनुभूति करके हमें लगता है कि कोविड नाइन्टीन का जो इम्पैक्ट है वो सिर्फ कोविड नाइन्टीन के दौरान ही नहीं रहेगा हम सब बात कर रहे हैं ये कई सारी इंजरीज पैदा करेगा ये कई सारी ऐसी जख्मे लॉन्ग टर्म पैदा करेगा जिसके ऊपर रेगुलर जो है वो काम करने की जरूरत है जैसे मैं आपको एग्जांपल दू कि नोमेडिक ट्राइब का ये फर्स्ट जनरेशन जो है जिसके अंदर के गिने चुने लोग हायर एजुकेशन तक पहुंच रहे हैं वो माध्यमिक एजुकेशन तक पहुंच रहे हैं ऐसे हालातों में जब घर का सारा जो है वो रिसोर्स ही खत्म हुआ है तो एक बड़ा ड्रॉप आउट ऑफ एजुकेशन का रेशियो बढ़ा है डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस का भी प्रमाण बढ़ा है एडिक्शन का भी प्रमाण बढ़ा है क्योंकि हम समझते हैं ना कि एडिक्शन भी मेंटल हेल्थ का एक सिम्टम्स करके हम देखते हैं कि जहां पे लोग इतने स्ट्रेस में जा रहे हैं तो एडिक्शन का भी प्रमाण बढ़ा है और ये सारे चीजों का जो इम्पैक्ट है वो घर की औरतों पर बच्चों पर और भी ज्यादा हो रहा है वहां पे कम्युनिटी मेंटल हेल्थ काउंसिलिंग का रोल बहुत मायने रखता है मैंने जैसे कहा ये लोग हेल्पलाइन तक नहीं पहुंच पाएंगे ये लोग किसी इंस्टीट्यूशन तक नहीं पहुंच पाएंगे और बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है कि नोमेडिक ट्राइब का कल्चर उनका स्टेटस उनका कंडीशन जानते हुए हम उनको काउंसलिंग करें हम उनकी जरूरतें उनके सवाल जानते हुए उनको काउंसलिंग करें तो ये एज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हमारा प्रिविलेज था कि मेरी खुद की आइडेंटिटी वो है तो मैं इस समुदाय को बहुत नजदीकी के साथ जानती हूँ और वहां पे हम अच्छा रोल जो है वो निभा पाए अभी तक वही काम चल रहा है जो एजुकेशन से रिलेटेड जो ड्रॉप आउट है या स्कॉलरशिप है वहां पे सपोर्ट करना मेडिकल इमरजेंसी केसेस काफी ज्यादा है क्योंकि सरकारी अस्पताल में कोविड 19 हो जाने के बाद प्राइवेट के ऑप्शन इनके पास है लेकिन प्राइवेट को एक्सेस करने का फाइनेंशियल रिसोर्स इनके पास नहीं है तो ऐसे हालातों में वो क्या करे तो बहुत ज्यादा जो हमारा एग्जिस्टिंग काम था ट्रेनिंग का युवाओं के साथ इलेक्टेड कॉर्पोरेटर्स के साथ स्टेक होल्डर्स के साथ वो काम थोड़ा सा स्विच करते हुए फोकस जो है वो पैंडमिक से जुड़े हुए कामों पर गया बहुत ज्यादा जो है वो एफर्ट्स लेने पड़े जहाँ पे हमें रिसोर्स मोबिलाइजेशन और रिसोर्स क्रिएटिंग के अंदर अपने एफर्ट्स लेने पड़े दूसरा जो है वो कैपेसिटी बिल्ड करने पड़े क्योंकि हम हम एज टीम करके काफी छोटे है तो कम्युनिटी लीडर्स और यूथ को ट्रेन करते हुए लोगों तक पहुंचना हमें काफी अनिवार्य लगा महत्व का लगा वो काम हमने किया कॉलेजेस के साथ हमने कई सारे सेशन किए यस कॉलेजेस के साथ हमने कई सारे सेशंस किए ऐसे कॉलेजेस जहाँ पे बहुत ज्यादा इस तरह का क्राउड जाता है जो एस टी एन टी नोमेडिक ट्राइब रूलर और एक तरह के मार्जिनलाइजेशन से जाता है एक इम्पोर्टेंट काम हमने किया कि हमने कम्युनिटी किचन के जो सेट से पूरा जो मटेरियल है वो करीबन पास से सात कम्युनिटी में डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किया क्योंकि जब कुछ कम्युनिटीज ऐसे भी है जो जिनके पास खाना पकाने के लिए भी रिसोर्सेस नहीं है ऐसे हालातों में जो माइग्रेशन क्राउड है जो अन, मतलब सेटलमेंट में नहीं बसे हुए लोग हैं, उनके लिए इस तरह के मटेरियल भी बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी थे जो हमने डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किए एक लास्ट एक मिनट में मैं यही कहूंगी कि पैंडमिक जो सिचुएशन है वो नोमेडिक ट्राइब के ऊपर हिस्टोरिकली इम्पैक्ट कर गया है काफी सालों के बाद ये कम्युनिटी जो है उभरने की कोशिश कर रही है अपने स्पेसेस क्लेम करने की कोशिश कर रही है और अपने आप की स्टेबिलिटी चाह रही है अपने ऊपर का क्रिमिनलाइजेशन का ठपका मिटाने की कोशिश कर रही है और पैंडमिक एक वेव की तरह आया एक स्ट्रॉन्ग वेव की तरह आया और उनके बसाए हुए कई सारी जो चीजें थी वो उसने डिस्टर्ब कर दी तो काफी रेगुलर एफर्ट्स के साथ हम यहाँ पे जुड़े हुए हैं थैंक यू थैंक यू दीपा आपका शुक्रिया करना चाहती हूँ आई विल क्विकली समराइज वॉट दीपा जस्ट हाईलाइटेड स्पीकिंग अबाउट हाउ अनुभूति ट्रस्ट वर्क इज बेस्ड प्राइमरली ऑन वर्किंग विद द मार्शलाइज कम्युनिटीज एंड द नोमैटिक ट्राइब्स एंड वट हैपन विद कोविड नाइनटीन वॉज दैट अ लॉर ऑफ द स्टेबिलिटी अ लॉर ऑफ द हिस्टोरिकल मूवमेंट दे हैड वर्क ऑन टू मेक श्योर दैट दे कुड not be criminalized not to be unseen that sort of took a hit with covid-19 and what uh, did happen was while they initially worked with ration support medical help and at the intersectionality of migration and mental health with gender and other um, 
they work at the key intersection of all of these various uh, topics. What COVID-19 also did was that they had to refocus and adapt a lot of their traditional activities to then account for the impact of COVID-19. Uh, they primarily began online counseling and capacity building uh, to make sure that they worked at the very intersectionalities of these. The relief work uh, continued uh, with forming partnerships with other key organizations. And a very key element of the work that Anubhuti Trust does is advocacy. Service delivery is not the only aim, but to really work at the stage where um, their rights are being spoken about, they're given a platform uh, to voice what they really need uh, is very important. And so advocacy is a key tool in all of the work that they do. Um, thank you so much, Diva, and I will uh, now hand it over to and introduce our next speaker, Victor Hugo. Um, Victor is a medical doctor and the founder of one of Africa's biggest user-led youth mental health networks, Mentally Aware Nigeria Initiative. He's currently working as the MHPSS and Youth Engagement Advisor with the MHPSS Collaborative. Victor's work and experience over the years have put him at the forefront of the global discourse on youth mental health. And he is very passionate about conversations regarding the decolonization of mental health, as well as representation in the global mental health sector. Victor, we're really glad you could join us and the stage is all yours. Thank you. Thanks, Yashi. Um, I just wanna be sure that um, you can hear me. If you can confirm that, then... Yes, I can hear you absolutely awesome. fine. Thank you. Is it okay for me to share my screen? I just have a few a few slides to to go through. Yeah. Um, great, thanks. Um, great, thank you. Um, so much of my the focus of my uh, presentation is going to be looking at the work of of the Mentally Aware Nigeria Initiative organization over the past couple of months and, and year um, that we have been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and one thing I would like to say is that this has been a very difficult time for most organizations and uh, it has brought out most of our creativity and, and, and stretched it to the limits. Um, and, and as well as even, you know, set us back in, in some of the programs that, you know, and strategy that we have as organizations. Um, and in the first three months of the COVID-19 pandemic starting, one of the things that we noticed was that we started seeing increased um, social media posts, uh, um, people sharing about their suicidal thoughts and, and increased um, anxiety. Really, that's, that's the kind of feeling that we saw. And usually in the past, when people post about the social media, on post on social media, some of their thoughts, we are that platform that especially in Nigeria, that people reach out to say, hey, you should address this. But I can tell you that in the first three months of COVID, we were so overwhelmed that we had to, you know, just take on more volunteers that could actually take take tons. So we, we had volunteers on shifts because of the, the, the huge influx of messages and, and, and mentions on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We had to, we had to get in more people to, to support that process. And... Yeah, that was one of the initial difficulties that we experienced. And then we have a screening platform on our website that people usually uh, go to, to just screen for symptoms relating to mental health conditions. Uh, they're, not, they're not diagnostic, but they're suggestive of possible, you know, signs that people should look out for. And we had an increased um, increase, in, increased number of people that were, that were presenting with symptoms associated with anxiety and depression. And most times when people present with those symptoms, there's a, there's a process for them to reach out to our team, for them to get support or get referral to, to hospitals and, and professionals that can be of help to them. And that process was also crowded. Um, another thing else that we, we noticed was that because at the initial stage, um, most of the health workers in, in hospitals and, and, and you know, whether it's community, community health, um, health centers and, and um, tertiary health centers, they didn't have access to, to PPEs, to protective equipments, but they were still demanded to be at work. And that sort of like increased the anxiety that they were experiencing. So we had increasing calls from people in those kinds of occupations that needed to be out 
does does um um, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, all of them, we were having increased um, um, calls and, and, we, and, and contacts from them. And um, it, it showed to, to an extent just the lack of preparation that we had as a country on the ground, even, even down to, not even, I'm not even talking about the mental health, but I'm just talking about the general health response on the ground um, that was lacking. And um, so what this led to was first to sit down and actually re-strategize. We had an initial strategy for the year, which included a lot of lots of offline programs that we had planned, but unfortunately, we had to sit down and, and change all of that. Um, so based on the fact that we had an increase in number of people reaching out for support, we, we started experiencing some kind of burnout within the staff and the volunteers that we had, which is very stressful. And regardless of, of how many times we were able to train new people to join and expand that kind of support on the ground, we were still not meeting up um, to the extent that we started reaching out to more organizations that we could refer people to. So we started making a list of organizations, not just in Nigeria, actually, organizations in Africa, we're reaching out to SADAG, uh, reaching out to South African Federation of Mental Health and Crisis Text Line to say, hey, we, we are overwhelmed and we would like to refer some of these people to you, but also we're reaching out to them for them to support our, our own staff. So that was very problematic for us at that, at that stage. Um, we had to push away some of at least a huge, uh, I mean, here I'm saying 80%, probably, it's probably much more than that of our project planning, which included our work in schools. We had to put that off, our work in different workplaces. We had to stop all those, any physical events that we, we had planned, we had to put, um, we had to halt. And obviously that affected um, some of the funded projects that we had and some of the projects that we, we had funding to actually deliver and um, led, led to the overhaul of, obviously, like I said, our whole strategy. We had to focus on online programs. Um, most of our online programs were now looking at creating content that was very specific to COVID. So looking at COVID anxiety, depression or sadness, low mood associated with you know, signs up with the lockdown and also with the fact that people were having issues financially. So we were trying to make sure that we had trained our volunteers and counselors on, on financial literacy and how to advise people when they reach out to you on that. On that. And also to make sure that um, they were well-versed in problem solving techniques, which was, because people were presenting to us with very practical problems. They were not necessarily symptoms about, you know, of depression. They were just like, you know what, I can't I can cope with this. Um, I can't eat, I'm not eating. I'm having, I'm having issues feeding my family. I can't go out because of the lockdown. So those, those are very practical issues that we typically wouldn't have solutions for because we are, men we are a mental health organization and not necessarily, we're not the government. Um, and I think that's one of the confusions, the confusions that we had at the time was that people actually believed that we were a government department set up to, to cater for people's welfare. And it was very difficult to, to, to diffuse that. Um, in terms of some of the innovations that we did, we thought that it was important to look at the data behind um, people, you know, how people were responding to, to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we embarked on a nationwide survey um, the results, we, 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 I think we're going to be launching that study in the next month. And um, we, we did a nationwide survey which covered all of all the regions and it wasn't specific to just young people. It was looking at, um, we we're looking at more than 2000 participants across, across the country. Um, and some of the data that we are getting from, we got from that was the fact that, you know, we were seeing increase in, in, increased COVID stress. Um, and its effect on people, um, whether they were um, actually people that, that um, should I say, the, the results showed that people that didn't have any support were have, finding it much more difficult to actually cope. So what are you doing, what are you, well, in terms of support, I'm talking about support with, uh, what I support from family or support from work, we we were seeing increase in symptoms of anxiety and depression actually with you know with people like that and we also saw some increase in um signs in women much more than we saw in men um so we, we have a number of those um results coming out and we'll be launching that study in the next couple of months um another thing else that we did was we we set up additional hotlines to cater for um people reaching out to us um we initially are uh, 
crisis support team was made up of about 400 counselors. In we between then and now, we have doubled or more than doubled that number because we were not we were not coping with the, with the amount of people reaching out to us. Um, another thing else that we did was to create content that was specific to COVID and how we can cope with COVID uh, related anxiety and depression. And that was put all on the website, um, which is projectcovid.ng, which is still active. And the other thing else that we did was to try and create activities online that people could join. So we had daily check-in activities. Um, we had people joining yoga activities that were hosting on Instagram, Instagram Live. We had um, people joining aerobic classes that we were hosting. We had a calendar set up that people could actually adapt and use for themselves. And that was one of the things that we saw that people found very useful during that time was we, we, we looked at creating that kind of community of activity. Um, because obviously when you look at people, other people doing something like you would want to be a part of it. Um, so this was these were some of the things that we did at the time. Um, we also started sharing stories of some of the frontline workers that we were in contact with um, who were experiencing both being on the front line and also um, being exposed to the risk of, 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 um, of, of contacting um, the virus. And also the anxiety as you were being able to, you know, being exposed to the risk and then coming back to your family and exposing them to the same risk that was was so terrifying for them. Um, so we're collecting the stories and publishing them on our blogs. And we also had a couple of fun challenges like the Good Morning Challenge where we had people go on TikTok and, and just you know say something positive about their day and about their, about their week, obviously, which was very difficult to do at the time. Um, and then we collaborated with different, different organizations to organize virtual trainings for, um, for their staff and for their students. Uh, which was delivered across different um, platforms. So we had Zoom, sometimes we used WhatsApp, um, sometimes we used Telegram. So depending on the platform that was much more convenient or, uh, or comfortable for them to use, we, we delivered those sessions. But I think the last thing, one of the last things that we did was to organize group therapy sessions because we found that if we were delivering therapy sessions or some of our counseling sessions individually, they were much more difficult to actually to sustain. So we started putting people based on their interests and based on the, on the presentations in groups and delivering those. So, so these were some of the things that we did at the time. Um, and um, I, I will stop here if there are any questions. Thanks for having me. And congratulations, Sangat, for your 25th anniversary. Thank you so much, Victor, for giving us an insight into how the pandemic affected uh, communities you worked with and how your organization tried to overcome those challenges and come up with innovative solutions uh, to really um, deal with what was happening on the ground. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, I would now like to invite our final speaker, Patty Gonzalez. Patty is a mental health researcher and public engagement specialist deeply motivated to break the stigma related to young people's mental health in India. Patty's work has focused on creating novel advocacy and education projects. She works with Sangat, an Indian mental health nonprofit, leading digital innovations and participatory projects supported by the Welcome Trust and Comic Relief. She also leads It's OK to Talk, which is a national anti-stigma campaign for youth mental health and suicide prevention. Patty, uh, thank you uh, for joining us and over to you. Thank you, Akshi. Uh, and hi, Deepa. Hi, Victor. Victor, it's nice to see you after so long. Um, yeah, th thanks. To, I mean, it was great to hear from you both. And uh, yeah, hard to follow Victor's slides. Uh, those were really excellent and, and Deepa's comments. Uh, I'll just be speaking a bit about uh, how COVID has impacted some of our work, particularly with young people uh, in Sangat and in India, uh, where we are based, uh, and to share with you a few examples of uh, what we did at Sangat. Uh, interestingly, a lot of our examples are actually very similar to uh, yours, Victor, from uh, Mentally Aware uh, Nigeria, but maybe with a bit of an Indian spin uh, on some of them. And finally, just uh, to share some observations with you uh, from some of these examples uh, for questions for how, how do we uh, move ahead? What do we do next? Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, so I work uh, in New Delhi uh, in North India, 
uh, with uh, Sangat, the host uh, for this event. And Sangat is a, an NGO with a mental health uh, not-for-profit that Nini does research work and also some outreach and awareness work related to mental health. Uh, most of my work is with young people, uh, especially young people based in schools. And what COVID has meant uh, is wide school closures for almost two academic years now. So we've, I mean, essentially been outside uh, of school for, for these past two years and hoping to restart some of our work with students uh, in the coming academic year. Uh, what not being able to access young people in person, uh, even though you know there have been advances in young people studying and, and moving online, uh, it has still meant that we have not been able to access or work with young people outside of the internet. Uh, and uh, through a few of our projects, we've seen that this is simply not feasible because uh, a vast majority of young people are still simply not online and it's just not possible to access them. And we're also seeing uh, data from different parts of the world now about how uh, COVID has increased the incidence of some mental health disorders. It's exacerbated mental health problems for particularly some groups who've been uh, especially socially isolated, those who uh, experience a lot of disruptive education, uh, for young people also who already had mental health problems, it has made that uh, for some of them much worse. So I think um, the point being that uh, we know that COVID is not creating a new crisis, but it is expanding uh, the existing crisis. It's highlighting parts of that crisis that we have not paid attention to, or parts of the crisis that we simply don't have resources uh, or the breadth of effective treatments to deal with. So over this past uh, two years now, almost uh, one and a half years at Sangat, um, I'll give you a few examples of some of the initiatives that we have launched, uh, both in the first wave and especially in, in India's second wave that was far, uh, far worse than what we saw uh, in 2020. Um, the, the main initiative that I'd like to highlight, uh, and I'll, I'll put the link in the chat uh, after this as well, is uh, a service that we launched uh, just a few months ago uh, towards the, somewhere in the middle of India's second COVID wave, uh, which is called the COVID-19 Wellbeing Center uh, at Sangat. And um, if someone from our team could pop the link uh, into the chat, you can have a look uh, on the side. But the idea with launching this uh, COVID-19 Wellbeing Center was that everybody has been impacted by COVID and we wanted to offer something uh, that was going to be useful for a range of different people's needs. So we've launched this center with three main uh, components. The first is uh, a toll-free helpline uh, that offers free counseling anywhere from one single session to uh, six to eight sessions, depending on uh, the, the individual's need. Uh, the helpline is offered every day. Uh, it's in a few different uh, Indian languages and English. Um, and it's, it's offered again, primarily on the telephone. Uh, so, you know, taking that emphasis away from only uh, internet or web-based uh, help options. The second is what is called a listening circle. And what this essentially is, is a, a group of small people who are meeting together to uh, speak in a facilitated, moderated uh, discussion to share uh, what they're going through related to COVID and to learn from other people's experiences to build solidarity uh, in a group uh, together. And these are being uh, specifically targeted at certain groups, uh, such as frontline workers who have been uh, much more adversely or quite adversely impacted uh, through COVID. Uh, these are also offered in a couple of different languages and they're open for, uh, there's open sessions that anyone can sign up for and join. And there are special sessions that are dedicated uh, to frontline workers uh, across the country. Uh, and the third, which is targeting anyone. So this could be you, uh, one of our attendees in this webinar. It could be, you know, you're looking for a resource for yourself. You're looking for a resource for a family member or a colleague. Uh, so it's a, it's a, um, a resource center that has uh, information, self-management and self-care resources uh, that people can use either for themselves or for others in their uh, communities. Um, a few other uh, initiatives over this last year and, and also where this, the COVID-19 center came from, where we wanted to launch and actually be able to offer a service where we could help people firsthand. Uh, what we had done last year um, was also we were part of services uh, or delivering services, but we're not offering them in as dedicated a manner. But we were engaging communities online, uh, quite similar to what uh, Victor highlighted uh, as well. So these were, for example, hosting panels, hosting Q&As, uh, having uh, sessions where young people uh, could just come in and ask their questions. And we saw similar kinds of problems related to 
uh, a lot of young people describing uh, anxiety, uh, things like sleep problems, domestic violence. uh not having a space for example even to be able to call a helpline uh, where a young person lives um and sort of keeping some of these uh the different challenges that came up through our community engagement particularly in the first or even after those uh, insights really helped us to build uh, what is now our covid-19 center and again cater to these different needs that people have um a couple of other uh, initiatives and and one that we're also particularly proud of uh, again very similar to victors but it was about sharing stories of how people have experienced covid uh, of people's strength resilience uh, and this was done through a podcast we we'll also pop the link in the chat here but called stories from a pandemic and uh, it's available now for, for anyone to listen to um but the way that we uh, structured and and documented uh, people's experiences was through a range of uh online interviews and online focus group discussions with uh, about 75 young people from uh, different parts of india and um uh, sort of talk to them to understand what their experiences were like and what themes uh, and what needs they had uh, that they would like us to discuss and that they would like to highlight uh, and we ended up with a few themes uh, particularly around sort of generally the kinds of challenges young people face through covid but also very specific things like how do you actually cope with grief Uh, how do you cope with loss of loved ones uh, issues related to suicide prevention uh, and we have a, a feature at the end that is dedicated to many young people who have served on the front line and are continuing to serve uh, on the front line through covid uh, in addition to to these um, sangath has also been working on generating evidence on understanding the actual impacts of of mental health through a survey that has been running now for or uh, many months again we can pop a link to uh to the survey into the chat in case anyone would actually like to take it or if you'd like to read more about the uh, findings from the survey those are regularly published uh, on sangath's website uh, and finally um another initiative again this is at a larger scale and and including one of our panelists with victor as part of a larger campaign uh calling on different world leaders to to include mental health into covid-19 uh, national response plans So these are just a few examples from uh things sort of as simple as sharing stories to uh helping to bridge uh that service gap uh in India. Uh finally um just I think you know one of the the biggest uh, observations or the biggest reflections through this process uh and for me personally also has been that uh, one of the questions actually that we received prior to this webinar was uh, what new uh, needs have emerged. Uh, and when i was thinking about this i think the answer for me was quite clear which is that you know very few new needs have have emerged but covid has had such a powerful effect on holding up a mirror to to us individually as well as to where we live the countries we live in uh, you know at a society level at a global level uh, that you know we cannot any longer continue to avoid uh, or not look at the things that we just don't want to see and this might be related to mental health or healthcare this could be uh related to people serving on the front line or beyond to suicide prevention education unemployment uh you know many issues that feel insurmountable uh um insurmountable um and i think covid does offer us uh, a, a historic opportunity to reexamine these issues uh, related to how uh, you know each of us but for our work in particular for example for how young people live for how young people learn how they work and to transform how we address these challenges and i think that's something that uh, for me uh, i'm really hoping to learn more about uh, through the discussion uh, now and also just i mean through each of the panelists experiences which is you know where do we go from here and how do we take some of these insights into uh, what um, uh, sort of the impacts of covid will be moving ahead thank you so much patty uh, for sharing light on uh, sangat's work and how we'll try to adapt to these trying times like many other organizations have in the world as well um we would now like to open up the floor for any questions that there may be uh, i'd encourage everybody to use the q and a chat box and pop in their questions there uh, please also use the upvote feature uh to show support for any questions you'd like to be answered by the panelists um i will start with a few questions that have been uh, popped up um as of now uh so 
दीपा मैं आपको पहले पूछना चाहती हूँ किसी ने चैट में पूछा है कि आपके वॉलेंटियर्स और वर्कर्स जब फील्ड वर्क करने जाते थे तो उनको भी कोविड का डर लगता होगा और वो कोविड वो फियर्स क्या थे और वो कोविड से सेफ कैसे रहते थे इंग्लिश हाउ यू एबल टू डील विद चैलेंजेस ऑफ कीपिंग योर एम्प्लॉज इन वॉलेंटियर्स सेफ फ्रॉम कोविड वाइल्स दे वर इन्वॉल्व इन फील्ड वर्क दीपा uh, मुझे लगता है ये सब ये जो क्वेश्चन है वो हमारा सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज ड्यूरिंग रिलीफ वर्क रहा है काफी इम्पोर्टेंट क्वेश्चन है ये हमने हमारा पूरा एफर्ट्स दिया है राइट right? uh, जो भी प्रोटोकॉल आए हैं जो भी रूल आए हैं जहाँ से हम कोविड पैंडमिक से संसर्ग होते हुए बच सकते हैं वो पूरी कोशिश हमने की है एक अच्छी बात वहां पे रही इस क्वेश्चन के आंसर में मैं कहूंगी कि जो लोगों के साथ हम काम कर रहे थे जिन कम्युनिटीज में हम काम कर रहे थे उन लोगों को हम बेहतर जानते थे उनके कम्युनिटी सेंटर्स रिलीफ वर्क की जगह को भी हम बेटर जानते थे अच्छा खासा नेटवर्क था जहाँ पे एक अच्छा अलाइनमेंट और कोलेब्रेशन को हम क्रिएट कर पाए हम डायरेक्ट जाके रिलीफ करते तो मे बी सेफ्टी मेजर्स को ध्यान में रखना काफी चैलेंजिंग जाता मतलब आप समझ सकते हो कि आप कहीं राशन बांट रहे हो और वहां पे क्राउड आ जाता है तो उसे हैंडल करना काफी मुश्किल जाता लेकिन कुछ कुछ चीजें हमने बहुत बाय प्रोसेस की है जैसे पहले ही डेटा मंगवाना कम्युनिटी से कि हम किन लोगों तक सर्विसेज प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं किन लोगों तक हम पहुंच रहे हैं रिलीफ वर्क की जगह है पहले से आइडेंटिफाई करना और वहां पे सेफ्टी मेजर्स का ध्यान रखना जो भी फील्ड वर्क के टीम वॉलेंटियर या हमारे स्टाफ इस प्रोसेस से जुड़े हुए थे हमने कंसेंट वहां पे रख मतलब उनका राय वहां पे रखा था कि जिनको इस प्रोसेस से जुड़ना है वो जुड़े जिनको नहीं जुड़ना है वो भी चॉइस जो था उनके पास था अभी करीबन अठारह उन्नीस महीनों के बाद मैं बोल सकती हूँ कि जो भी हमारे फील्ड वर्क के साथ जुड़े हुए लोग थे उनमें से कोई भी पॉजिटिव नहीं आया तो शायद हमारे सेफ्टी मेजर्स ठीक काम कर गए हमारा एक्स्ट्रा एक तरह से हाइपर होना ठीक काम कर गया हम जो भी काम करते थे वो बहुत ही सात लोगों में आठ लोगों की इसमें करते थे कि जहाँ पे एक समय पे रिलीफ लेने के लिए लोग आए तो वो सात आठ के ही नंबर्स में आए फिर सेकेंड बैच आए फिर हम डिलीवर करें जहाँ पे कॉर्नर्स मीटिंग है वहां पे भी हमने कोशिश की कि जो भी हम जगह देखेंगे वहां पे एक ठीक ठाक डिस्टेंस के साथ सात से आठ लोगों को मतलब हमें रिपीट काम काफी करने पड़ेंगे मल्टीपल काम काफी करने पड़ेंगे लेकिन नंबर्स हम कम रखे सिम्टम्स के ऊपर हमने बहुत ध्यान दिया दूसरा हमने किया कि जो हमारे ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल पॉलिसी होती है अटेंडेंस की ये सारी चीजों के हम अंदर हमने काफी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी दी ट्रैवल के अंदर हमने काफी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी दी हमने लोगों की सैलरी और ये सारी चीजों को लेकर काफी सेंसिटिव मोड में डिस्कशंस किए कि जो लोग जुड़ रहे वो रिस्क लेके जुड़ रहे हैं हमारे जो टीम पैंडेमिक के दौरान रिलीफ वर्क के साथ जुड़ी हुई थी उनके फैमिलीज की भी हमने काउंसिलिंग की क्योंकि किसी के लोग तो आने नहीं दे रहे थे ग्राउंड पे जिन्होंने भी क्वेश्चन पूछा मैं उनको कहूंगी कि एज ग्रास रूट हमारे पास दूसरा ऑप्शन भी नहीं था क्योंकि अगर हम ग्रास रूट पे नहीं जाएंगे तो और कौन जमीन पे काम करेंगे दूसरा है कि हम जैसे बहुत फ्यू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है जो नोमेडिक के साथ काम करते हैं तो विथ रिस्क विद बर्डन हमें काम करना ही था क्योंकि अगर हम नहीं जाते तो बहुत एक बड़ा पॉपुलेशन होता जिनके पास रिलीफ नहीं पहुंच सकता तो एक तो मैं कहूंगी कि फिल्डवर्क से जुड़े हुए अभी तक कोई पॉजिटिव नहीं निकले है तो मे बी हमारा काम ठीक काम करेगा थैंक यू सो मच दीपा आपका शुक्रिया करना चाहती हूँ आई जस्ट समराइज आंसर रियली क्विकली एज वेल शी सेव दैट इट वॉज द वेरी फ्यू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट वर्क विद नोमैटिक ट्राइब्स एंड देर वॉज अ बर्डन देर वॉज अ रिस्क दैट देर वेरी वेरी अवेयर अबाउट एंड सो वाइल दे ट्राई टू फॉलो ऑल नेशनल गाइडलाइंस दैट वर्क अडेप विथ कोविड देर वर ऑल्सो ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल गाइडलाइंस दैट हैड टू अडेप्ट एंड चेंज टू प्रोवाइड दैट मोटिवेशन एंड टू बी ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी माइंडफुल ऑफ द रिस्क दैट दीज पीपल आर टेकिंग ऑन सो देर वर अलाउंसेज दैट वर मेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ Uh, salary travel as well as uh, really incorporating and understanding that it's more of a wider change that was needed which is why they not only uh, extended their uh, services and allowances to their volunteers but also their families including counseling services and so on and a great um, i guess take away was that none of the field work uh, none of the volunteers or workers had the so they're very very happy to have followed all safety protocol guidelines and 
while it did come with a lot of risk that they're very aware about, it was something that uh, they had to follow and they had to do to meet the needs of the communities they've worked so closely with. Uh, thank you, Deepa. Um, I would like to ask my next question uh, to both Victor and uh, Patty. Um, there was a question, uh, just gonna pull it up one. There was a question about um, how we're currently in the nascent stages, uh, both India and Nigeria, and the nascent stages of breaking out of mental health stigma. And I find that the focus in governance has been more on regulating and caring for mental illnesses that are of a much greater degree and tend to ignore counseling and therapy for people generally. How would you say this problem needs to be fixed? Uh, maybe uh, both Victor and Patty could answer for their own context. Uh, Victor, over to you first. Sure, I, I think I already typed my answer, but I, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna read it. I, I still think that's a policy problem because um, if we were to use a very structured and systemic approach to addressing mental health problems in country, it wouldn't be an issue whether, you know, I don't think stigma would be much of an issue. Um, so, for example, the example I gave here was if we if we had a government that was implementing the image gap. So the, the World Health Organization has this program called the image gap, um, which actually uses a, a tired approach, uh, a tax shifting approach to make sure that different um, health workers at different level um, are available to take care of people presenting with mental health symptoms whether the symptoms are severe or, or not severe or mild. Uh, and imagine that in a particular county, you have a primary healthcare center with community health workers who are trained to provide counseling for people that present with mild um, mental health conditions. And then if people present with much more serious conditions, they refer to secondary healthcare centers. And if they present with severe mental health conditions, they are, you know, you referred to tertiary healthcare centers who have specialists and psychiatrists that can actually take care of those people that, that are being referred. What this means is that if someone that needs counseling comes into a primary healthcare center, they would get counseled. They would get talk therapy. If someone, if, if it's not working, they will be referred to a secondary, secondary healthcare center where they will see a doctor who assess for all the conditions and also provide them with appropriate treatment. And if it's severe, they can now be referred to tertiary healthcare centers. So if we have governments that are actually implementing these very, um, these very impactful programs that have been tested and piloted and seem to work, I don't think that this will be much of an issue. So to me, it still comes down to a policy problem, policy problem that um, we haven't, we haven't, we don't have a political will to actually implement um, any of these programs that have been seen to be impactful. Thank you, Victor. Oh, Patty, over to you. Thanks. I, I think just to add to Victor's point uh, and to give you a small example of something that we uh, saw in one of our school programs is that um, having services is not enough, but uh, people actually need to want to access the services. So building mental health literacy, building demand uh, is one way. Uh, providing the service is definitely not enough. So for example, in one of our school programs, uh, we were offering free counseling to students in schools, but they were just not uh, showing up for it. They didn't want it. And we then realized that we actually needed to sensitize them to understand, you know, what is this program? What happens in it? What are the benefits of uh, joining the program? And, and after uh, running that sensitization that we realized, you know, it's just like a classroom activity. You go and you have a 20 to 30 minute chat. You watch a video, you have a discussion, and that's something that might sound very, very simple and basic, but that, that's quite important in building an understanding about, you know, what a service is, why it might help you. So I think building literacy uh, and building awareness go hand, uh, hand in hand with uh, providing services. And I think the point around stigma comes in there. Stigma will be reduced the more that people talk about it and feel that it's okay to access a service and that the service is available when you need it. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for that, Patty. Um, Deepa, I want to next question. What can we do to move forward? What is the work that has been done with COVID-19? What is the work that has been done with COVID-19? 
मैं अभी जो पहला क्वेश्चन है उसको एड्रेस करते हुए फिर हाँ। आगे के क्वेश्चन को भी एक करूंगी कि कई बार गवर्नमेंट जो है वो एक तरह के सेटल डिजीज डिसऑर्डर्स के बारे में काफी बात करता है लेकिन जो सिचुएशन सिचुएशन से आते हैं जो इमरजेंसी से आते हैं और अलग अलग समुदाय के ऊपर जो असर करते हैं उसके बारे में गवर्नमेंट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन या डिसीजन मेकर से वो सेंसिटिविटी नहीं नजर आती है जैसे अगर मैं हेल्पलाइन की भी बात करूं कि गवर्नमेंट ने हेल्पलाइन भी निकाली है लेकिन वहां पे मेरे लेन से जब मैं देखती हूं तो क्या वो हेल्पलाइन के ऊपर बात करने वाले लोग नोमेडिक और एस्टिक ट्राइब कम्युनिटीज को जानते हैं वो उनके स्टेटस और कंडीशंस को जानते हैं उनके कल्चर को जानते हैं जहाँ पे वो उनको सजेस्ट और थेरेपी दे पाए या काउंसिल कर पाए राइट तो वहां पे मुझे लगता है कि जो ग्रास रूट कम्युनिटीज है उसको लेकर मेंटल हेल्थ का अगर कोई भी सर्विस डिलीवरिंग करना है तो सबसे पहले वो कम्युनिटीज की अंडरस्टैंडिंग होना बहुत जरूरी है वहां पे मुझे गवर्नमेंट बिल थोड़ा कम दिखता है दूसरा आपने सवाल पूछा कि इन सारी चीजों को लेकर कैसे आगे जा सकते हैं मुझे फिर से वही लगता है कि मेंटल हेल्थ भी फिर से सर्विस ही नहीं है सिर्फ सर्विस के साथ साथ वो रिप्रेजेंटेशन भी है उन लोगों का रिप्रेजेंटेशन जो अपने मेंटल हेल्थ सर्विसेज के बारे में खुद सजेस्ट करे वो खुद डिमांड करे और वो खुद चाहे कि किस तरह से होंगे क्योंकि जो अभी अवेलेबल कई सारी चीजें हैं वो ब्रिलियंट होते हुए भी वो ग्रास रूट तक पहुंच नहीं पाती है क्योंकि उसका एडप्शन वहां पे नहीं हो पाता है उसका एक्सेप्टेंस वहां पे नहीं हो पाता है और ब्रीजिंग का जो है वो मेन लूप होल और ड्रॉबैक वहां पर रह जाता है तो अगर हमें आगे जाना है तो सबसे पहले जो हमारी एक मेन स्ट्रीमिंग की रफ्तार है जो बहुत तेज भागती है राइट right. तो मेंटल हेल्थ मेरे लिए सिर्फ एक सर्विस का मुद्दा ना होते हुए वो सोशल हरार का भी मुद्दा है वो सामाजिक उतरण का भी मुद्दा है तो इसके लिए हमारे नजरिए हर इंस्टीट्यूशन को लेकर बहुत ही ज्यादा सेंसिटिव करने की जरूरत है जैसे मैं आपको एग्जांपल दू अगर मैं समझा नहीं पा रही हूँ तो कि एजुकेशन के साथ हमारा बहुत नजदीकी के साथ काम है कॉलेजेस के साथ क्या कॉलेजेस के अंदर किसी भी तरह की काउंसिलिंग सिस्टम अवेलेबल है अगर वो होती तो शायद पेंडेमिक के दौरान काफी यूथ के जो नजदीकी के साथ रिलेशनशिप के सुसाइडल थॉट के जो केसेस हमने डील किए या हैंडल किए जो यूथ हम तक नहीं पहुंच पाए वो शायद कॉलेजेस तक पहुंचते तो मेंटल हेल्थ ये हर इंस्टीट्यूशन में आने वाली बात है तो अगर आगे जाना है हमें तो उसको बहुत ही ग्राउंड एंगल से और ग्राउंड रियालिटी से देखने की जरूरत है एक्चुअल ग्राउंड रिप्रेजेंटेशन के साथ देखने की जरूरत है Thank you, Deepa. Uh, to summarize what Deepa just highlighted, which I think is a very key issue, she said that mental health is not just a problem with regard to service delivery and making services accessible, but it's also about representation and whether or not the services that are available in the mainstream actually are acceptable, feasible. to the people of the people that are staying at the grassroots level the marginalized communities and whether or not we're taking into account cultural context of all of these other populations as well uh, while the government is trying to build a mental health care plan or a mental health care package so it is a very important social development issue as well and we need to be mindful about um the larger context and the wider population given that india and a lot of other countries are very very diverse in uh, its range um i think we're almost uh, close to the end of the seminar but maybe i could take one more question uh, for uh, each of the panelists uh, patty uh, somebody has asked how did sangat manage to adapt its normal clinical services during the pandemic would you like to address that Sure. I mean, it's a very short answer, uh, but it was mostly online or on the telephone, uh, and through the new toll-free number that we've launched. Um, so it's yes, mostly sort of shifting uh, online on the phone. Thanks for that. Um, with the, there's another question for you as well. Um, how are organizations dealing with the challenge of employee burnout a uh, healing for healers and safeguarding the mental health needs of volunteers and advocates at the grassroots level i think the one thing that we did was to make it absolutely normal for people to take breaks you know to encourage it to say if you if you feel any any sign of burnout please just take a break and also make sure that they felt they they were in a community so we had um setting groups that They were just meant for playing. People could just have chats about anything, unrelated to work, unrelated to what they were doing. Um, so 
yes, it, it was problematic at, at the start, but I think we got to adapt um, when we created those communities that people could have a chat and um, and also make it absolutely normal for them to take breaks. Actually, we, we made it we made it um, compulsory for them to take breaks and reduce the number of cases that we're taking at a, at a particular time. Thank you so much, Victor. Um, we're close to the end of it. It's almost time up. Uh, so I will, uh, if you guys have still have questions in the chat box, I'd encourage you all to tweet the questions to Sangat India, use the hashtag mental health and COVID, and we will try to get as many questions answered as possible. Um, thank you to all the panelists and attendees for joining us today and contributing to this enriching discussion with your questions. Uh, the video recording of this webinar will be available on our YouTube page, Sangat India, and can be accessed anytime. We will also be planning more webinars and discussions in the near future as part of Sangat's 25 year anniversary celebration. There's also a mental health festival that we are planning in the second week of September details of which will be uh, popped in the chat box as well. Uh, so please do stay posted uh, through Sangat's social media accounts and we hope to see you all in the next event. Uh, thank you so much and I will have a, rest of, uh, have a good rest of the week. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Yashi. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you so much for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.